Welcome back to Autism Live. We have joining us in the studio right now, Dr. Andrea Mills. She is, not, now I'm going to mess up your title. That's all right. You're, uh, at heart, you're a chiropractor, but not just any chiropractor. You're a children and family Correct. chiropractor. Yep. Am I, I'm in the neighborhood. Absolutely. Uh, and owner and practitioner at Restore, Restoration Excuse Me, Chiropractic. Yes. Okay. So that's a mouthful uh, <laughs> right there. <laughs> and maybe we should start with breaking that down. What does it mean to be a pediatric and family chiropractor? Because I think a lot of people might be going, huh, never heard that before. Right, exactly. Well, when the public thinks of chiropractic, if they have a positive impression of it, what do they normally think of it for? Uh, cracking your back. Right, so back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, yes. and headaches, that kind of thing, yeah. right? And um, it's interesting how many people don't even have a positive impression of it there. Yeah. But very few people ever consider it for children. And it's a little bit too bad. When we look at, um, when we look at chiropractic, it was established in 1895. And the reason it came about as a profession is a deaf guy got his hearing back, actually. So, really? Yeah. And so chiropractic from the very early days was really about whole body function through making sure that the nervous system is communicating properly to the body. So making sure that that brain body connection is working at its optimum, because when the brain body connection is working, we know that the body is really designed to be healthy, right? Like if you cut your finger, you expect it to heal. Right. So if that brain body connection is working properly, the body can do amazing things. Okay. I just want to say nobody has ever explained it to me that way before. Okay. I was just saying to you that when I was a teenager, my mom would take us to a chiropractor and the first one that she took us to would literally throw me all over the table <laughs> and be making all these noises and things but I would get off the table and feel like angels singing I said Wah! Wah. you know because I felt better and not just my back everything felt better I right. felt clearer my brain felt clearer everything felt great so that makes a little bit more sense to me I didn't think about it as being anything other than spine alignment well, and, and it is spine alignment, but why are we doing it? We're doing it because we're affecting that nervous system as a whole. You know, it's funny. People think of the spinal cord like a USB cable that plugs into the brain, mm, right? Yeah. But it's not. It's an extension of the brain. And it is the conduit for every message from your brain to every single tissue cell in your body. So then when you look at the spinal anatomy, there are nerves that synapse with the spinal cord. And if there's a misalignment of that spinal segment, it can actually affect how those messages are going from the spinal cord to the nerve. And then that nerve takes all of those messages to your body parts to keep you alive, right? And so what happens if those messages are cut off? Well, sometimes it's super dramatic, like, oh, I've got you know, sharp shooting pain down my arm, right? right? But sometimes it's not dramatic. Sometimes it's like we turn these lights down 1%. Yes. And we don't know it. Right. And then next week we turn them down another percent. And we don't know it. And then the next week we turn them down another percent. And we don't know it. But in 50 weeks we're like, how the heck did it get so dark in here? Yeah. Right? And so when the body has that kind of dysfunction where it's very slow and insidious, the person doesn't recognize that it's happening. And all of a sudden they're like, why do I feel so bad? Wow. So what we're looking at when we're looking at children is sometimes because of the birth process, the top two bones of the neck can get misaligned because of the birth process. Think of, you know, a child is coming down the birth canal, mm -hmm. head comes out, what do the doctors do? They turn. Grab it and pull, Yeah. right? C-section, what do the doctors do? Grab and pull. And so it can create a misalignment of the top two bones of the neck, which wow. can then impact spinal messages all the way down. Wow. Right? Okay. I think, though, like if we want to really get someplace here, we have to address the fact that people are afraid sometimes. Of course they are. They're, you know, they're afraid because there's a noise that happens. There can be. And sometimes. Yep. And, you know, and sometimes I, I can remember the first time someone did the thing where my neck cracked and there was sort of a sharp mo movement and I was like, what just happened? Right. I don't normally let people touch me that way. Right. And to take your baby and go, yeah, do that to my baby. <gasps> I can hear people going, I'm not sure. Well, the first thing you need to know is we don't do that to babies. Okay. Okay. The way their anatomy is, you would never want to do that kind of emotion. And honestly, I don't typically adjust that way anyway. There's many techniques for adjusting. Okay. Um, so, you know, people associate that, that rotation move with chiropractic, but that's not the only way to get the job done. Okay. Um, certainly it's not my favorite way to get the job done. I just don't think it's a specific. And with a child, because their anatomy is not fully ossified, like it's, it's so much cartilage still, they haven't yeah. turned completely into bone, we need very gentle pressure. Okay. So the way, give me your, give me your hand, the okay. way you would adjust a baby is no more than you would test the ripeness okay. of a tomato, right? And I'm very sensory, you guys, and that's, not, that's yeah, nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. That was great. It's very, okay. very gentle. 
Okay. So we would never do that to a baby. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm like, gee, I want to know what insurance you take. <laughs> right? Doesn't everybody want to go to her right now for yourself and for your kids? Um, and and the truth is, is that when, when I was younger, I don't think, because um, I'm old, uh, I don't think that my mother was having our chiropractic done through insurance. I don't think it was it, w it went through insurance back in those days. Yeah, maybe when, probably when didn't. The, when the horse and buggy days. But um, now a lot of us have insurance that it covers chiropractic. And so people can go. Where would they go to find somebody? You're in our area. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about how people would find you. But where can they? Where should they be looking for somebody like you if they're not in your area? There's a couple of different places. So um, chiropractors who work on children, you want to make sure that they're registered with the ICPA. That's the International Chiropractic Pediatric Association. Who knew that existed? Right. So the website is uh, www.icpa the number four okay. kids.org. Okay. Okay. And so there they can go find a chiropractor who specifically sees children. There's additional trainings that the ICPA puts on so that we're, you know, well versed in handling kids from birth on up. So that'd be the first place to look. I'm gonna have you say that website again slower. Sure. www.icpa the number four kids dot org. Okay. Okay. ICPA for kids dot org. org. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there they have a doctor directory. You know, find a doctor, you can plug in your um, zip code and they'll give you doctors who are registered with the ICPA. Okay. And they also have a diplomat program, which I'm in the middle of. Okay. And um, then there are also Webster certified doctors, and Webster is a technique specifically for pregnancy. Oh, my. So goodness. I'm Webster certified as well. Okay. And that's where the whole pediatric and family comes in. And where do you find when somebody's Webster certified? From the, from the ICPA website. Okay. Yeah. So, so you can, there on that so one you, what you can do is you can, you can um, what's the word I'm looking for? You can filter it based on what kind of a chiropractor okay. you're looking for. All right. Yeah. Fascinating. There's a ton of great articles and research there too. Okay. Um, for parents to look at covering all sorts of different things, you know, chiropractic and autism, of course, ADHD, bedwetting, asthma, like all of these different Okay. things and how that spinal health can affect them. Well, let's talk about that. How can spinal health help all the things that you just listed? ADHD, bedwetting, uh, autism, how, how do those things interconnect? So let's go back to um, how the body communicates, Okay. right? The brain controls everything and how it sends messages is down through the spinal cord. Okay. And then those messages synapse with nerves and those nerves take the messages to the end organ. Um, misalignments of the spine can actually create either pressure on the nerve or nerve interference where the messages are not getting through to the body part properly. So maybe that body part is not functioning 100%. So let's say that nerve is going to the sphincter of the bladder, right? If the sphincter of the bladder is not getting full communication from the brain, maybe it's not going to be as tight as it should be. Okay. Or maybe it doesn't have as much control as it should. And so we just, the thing is, we can identify that there's nerve interference, but we can't identify how that nerve interference is affecting the body. Okay. Does that make sense? That does we understand, sense. you know, if we look at these different spinal levels, we understand where those spinal levels innervate in the body, okay. but it's very hard for us to say, oh, exactly what's going to happen. But so are you saying it's precise enough that if somebody comes to you and says, my child is having bedwetting issues, and we're dealing with this in lots of different ways, mm -hmm. we're dealing with this behaviorally, you know, uh, we've we've had their bladder looked at mm -hmm. through, you know, an ultrasound, whatever. But we're here with you because we want to rule this out, that this isn't a part of it. Right. That you can know where on the back attaches to those. And you would focus your uh, energy on, on, on adjusting that part of the back. Correct. So there's something called computerized infrared thermography. So I don't know if you've ever... It's a whole, 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 whole thing, whole right? It's a whole rabbit uh, hole here, <laughs> folks. It's like, back it up. Okay, okay so let's go... What? Let's Computerized infrared thermography. So okay. you know those infrared thermometers that chefs use to test the temperature of sure. food? Okay, so it's kind of like that, but a little bit more scientific. Okay. So let's take it way back to Hippocrates. Okay. When he, when he was trying to find out if somebody was ill, what he, sometimes what he would do is he would put mud on the spine of the person, uh -huh. and one side would dry faster than the other. Interesting. Because it was hotter. 
Okay. And so you would say, oh, okay, we need to look at what's going on in these areas, okay? okay? So the reason for that is because the way the autonomic nervous system controls the blood vessels to the, uh, the skin around the spine is the exact same mechanism that it controls the blood vessels to the organs and glands at that level. Okay. And so we're really looking at autonomic nervous system function, all right? And so with this computerized infrared thermography, it picks up temperature readings on both sides of the spine, and we know that if it's greater than X, whatever X is, I think it's 0.2 degrees Celsius, but what do we okay. know? if it's greater than X, whatever X is, then there is dysfunction on how the autonomic nervous system is controlling the blood vessels. Well, all right then. So it's very scientific. The thermal scanning, it doesn't hurt. It's just a little roller thing that run, runs up the spine. And we can literally scan these kids and we can see where the heat is. And then if we look at those spinal levels, let's say it's around, you know, T12 or L1. We can look at the, that person's symptoms and see if there are symptoms that correspond with those spinal levels. Okay, well, I've been to the chiropractor many <laughs> times in my life, and I don't remember anybody ever taking a temperature of my spine before. Yeah. And, and I'm asking you guys, have you had this happen? Is So is this only certain chiropractors have this kind of technology and others just don't waste time on it? Yeah. Because they can't afford it? I don't, what's the thing It's here? a little bit newer. I mean, it's been around for a while, um, but it is a little bit, a little bit expensive to get. Okay. But I feel like if you're working with children, Children, you need to have something objective to look at yeah. because you can't feel the spine and really determine what's going on with and that often child. they can't say it hurts here exactly or this I, I can't control when I pee they don't have the language to be able exactly. to say that on the spectrum or not on the spectrum right especially but the nonverbal kids yes. right so um, it just gives us a way to objectively measure and it's interesting because you know a lot of chiropractic's detractors will say, oh, there's no science, there's no science, which is just absolutely not true. There's a ton of science. Yeah. Um, and so this particular, this particular piece of equipment was developed out of the science showing that the, the thermography, the temperature difference on the spine really does relate to organ function. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's very cool, yeah. uh, but I'm a little, I gotta say I'm a little angry because I have taken my son to the chiropractor mm -hmm. um, and nobody's ever used that on him either. No. So that's making me a little bit. But you know, you also have to look at results. Like if you, if you take someone to a chiropractor and they don't use it, but you're still getting good results, then okay. does it matter? Well, but, but maybe there's stuff we don't still don't know. Perhaps. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But in any case, now we're all going to go to that website and get our people through there. Yes. And then hopefully they will know about some of this technology. Yeah. Or we'll go get some mud. Yes. Like, <laughs> and put it on your back and see which side drives <laughs> faster. That's right. Yeah. All right. There's a way, when there's a will, there's a way. Right. Okay. So, uh, but then let's talk specifically about autism. Okay. So, um, what in the spine connects to autism? Everything. Every, yeah, well, okay. that makes sense, right? So, um, without getting too deep into the neurology, what happens is when you look at the sensory information going into the body, the health of the spine can actually change how that person is perceiving and adapting to their environment. Mm. And it has to do with disafferentiation, which is just a really fancy word for uh, improper sensory input is getting to the brain. Now, the brain does not grow in a vacuum it grows and develops based on its interactions with the outside world. And a lot of times when there's a misalignment in the spine, it will actually throw the person into a fight or flight sympathetic state, mm -hmm. okay? So now imagine your neurology is shoved into this fight or flight state and you're perceiving the world through that lens of fight or flight. How might you behave? Well you might be running away from things right and, and that running away might be literally your feet going away or right. it might mean kicking somebody or hitting them to get might, away right. to get out or you might be aggressive or maybe yes. you're biting you're fighting right yes. okay and so what happens is when we do the adjustment it will literally take the person out of that fight or flight response and put them into a more resting healing and restoring and so it just helps balance out that autonomic nervous system into more of a balanced state and so what we see is we see generally within the first, I usually do a re-exam every 12 visits, mm -hmm. but by the end of the second re-exam, we're starting to see changes in their autonomic nervous system. And again, we can measure that. And that's because you're reopening the communication between the spine and the brain by, by removing whatever obstacles have created themselves. Exactly. We're just improving that brain-body connection by removing interference at the spinal level. 
it's just so fascinating and mind blowing. It really is. It's great. So what kinds of things have you seen in your practice that for to give people some hope of some differences that they you've seen in kids? Okay. Um, I've seen kids with ADHD. Uh, I literally had this one guy when he came to me, he was bouncing off the walls. I had a couch in my waiting room and he was like literally boing, 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 yeah. like around the office. We've got people watching. Yeah, absolutely. And um, he calmed down relatively quickly. I'd say within two months, his mom noticed a huge difference. Uh, we typically see in, we typically see improvements in children's ability to focus. Um, I've seen children with chronic ear infections. Ear infections go away. Um, kids who have come in with asthma, their asthma is improved. Wow. Um, obviously, bedwetting you know something that yeah. we see. So you know, really, we're not working specifically on those particular ailments. We're just improving that brain body connection so that then the body can regulate itself. And you talked a little bit about you know you reevaluate after twelve. Um, Tell us a little bit about, so you come in for the first appointment and you do evaluation to mm -hmm. see what it is that you're going to be working on. And then how long typically are appointments and how many appointments do you usually tell people, look, this is how much time it's going to take. Is it different for every patient? It is different. It really depends on how bad the nervous system dysfunction is. Okay. So if there's um, you know mild to moderate nervous system dysfunction, it might be you know six to 18 visits. I mean, I just don't know. Okay. It's hard to say if it's more severe. Uh, if it's more severe dysfunction, we're going to be looking at longer care plan. You know, some of these kids, they got that first, that misalignment is called a subluxation. Okay. And they got that first subluxation at birth. So if a kid comes into me and they're eight, and that subluxation has been there for eight years, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time to get that structure to recognize the new normal. You know, think of braces on the teeth, right? Yeah. Um, it takes two to three years to get the teeth to change, and then you have to wear a retainer or they go right back. Right. So the, the soft tissues around the spine are similar. Okay, so, and when people are bringing in a child, is it a thing where you come in once a week and it's a half hour appointment, or is it three times a week and it's an hour each time? So, you know, kids, especially kids on the spectrum with neurodevelopmental challenges, they have so many activities between mm -hmm. ADA yeah, and OT, like thinking. all this yeah. stuff. So I always tell the parents, like, look, we're going to make it work around your life. Twice a week is ideal. Okay. But if they can't do twice, once a week is okay. And what I say to them is it's kind of like going to the gym. If you're going to go to the gym once a week, you can expect slower results than if you go twice a week or three okay. times a week. I typically don't do a three-time-a-week schedule just because my demographic, moms and kids, they're too busy. Okay. Uh, but with, like, maybe a chronic pain practice, they might do something like that. And is it a half an hour? Is it No, the minutes? first visit is between 30 minutes and an hour, depending on what we need to do. And then okay. after that, you're in the office maybe 10 minutes. Fascinating. The it's interesting, thing isn't it? Is, it is interesting because I think a lot of people, um, there are already a lot of people who have looked at this and said, this makes sense to me, mm -hmm. and, and they're included in their practice, but I think a lot of people don't. Um, I have taken my son to a chiropractor, but, awesome. it, but it was later uh, when he was done with ABA. Okay. Um, and I have to be honest that that particular chiropractor made it so difficult for us. That's too they bad. They personally made it difficult for us um, through a lot of different things. And I know that insurance has changed, mm -hmm. and um, but it was so difficult that we said, enough, stop. Um, although he, my son loved it, felt better. And I'm just thinking, you know, low self-esteem, bad mom at the moment, because I'm like, I should have kept up. I should have gone on to another chiropractor. I yeah. should have. I, I should have, you know, said to the chiropractor, do you understand you're making this difficult? Right. Do you understand that your staff is making it difficult? Yeah. Um, and they did. That's Man, too bad. They just really did. So um, I, I, I love that there's a website that people can go to to look and see that their people are certified. Absolutely. I think that's wonderful. For people who are here in California mm -hmm. and who now are in love with you and want to come to you, do you have room in your practice to take on more people, yes. first of all? And how can they get a hold of you? So my office is in Calabasas. Um, I'm across, well, the, only if you're local will you get this reference, but I'm across and just a little bit north of Sagebrush Cantina. Um, exactly where yeah, exactly. Is. So my, I mean, I think you guys have my website and my phone number, and people can reach out to me either way. Traven, do you have the website? Have you been putting that up? He does. It's right there. Awesome. RestorationChiroSFV.com. Correct. Some people listen to us on iTunes. Okay. So I just want to read that again. Restoration Cairo, C H I R O S F V, I assume for San, San Fernando San Valley. Valley. Right. Dot com. If you want to get a hold of her, because I am not, uh, for some reason, able to get your questions at this time, and I don't know why. 
Uh, but that's what it is. Uh, so your practice then, lots of different types of people coming in, I'm sure with lots of different types of questions. How young is too young? In the womb? Because you do the, the yeah, for the maternity. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, rea the reality is if a pregnant mom delivers her child and she can get to the office on the way home when the hospital <laughs> releases her, that'd be ideal. Um, and again, wow. it's just we, we just we just check the child to make sure there is no nervous system interference. If there right. isn't, good, no adjustment, we're done, right? But go. if there is, let's do a very gentle adjustment to make sure that that child goes home with that brain-body connection in full force wow. so they can grow and develop with no interference. Okay. Yeah. And then because you do pediatric and family, how mm -hmm. often do you see that somebody brings a child in and mom or dad also needs yeah. to be adjusted. Right? Actually, especially with the uh, neurodevelopmental moms, talk about being stuck in fight or flight, Oh, right? Yeah. They are so stressed out and they are doing so much work to take care of their children. And, you know, there's never any time for them. I'm one uh, of those moms. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not anymore. Uh, things are much better. Because your son is a grown, right? Right, and he's so much better because we were able to get the things we needed earlier. Right. But I still carry that and can right. very instantly be back if I'm sitting talking with a mom. We, we sometimes talk about it in a PTSD, mm -hmm. and it has been documented in people that, you know, I can go right back there. I, I just spent two days with moms, and I came home, and I felt like I needed to be ironed. Right. Because I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, because I could remember all of that, that stuff. Yeah, so it's real important for the moms as well. Um, to take care of themselves and to get away, you know, to find a way to get them themselves out of fight or flight and into yeah. a more balanced autonomic state. Well, we just did a whole thing about mindfulness earlier today, yeah. and so this also can be a part of it, you guys. Absolutely. Uh, because the mindfulness will work better if everything is open and all the channels are open. Absolutely. And it's not something that we can do on our own, correct? Sadly, no. Right. Right. You know, it's interesting because you can have a misalignment of the spine that does not have nervous system interference. And then, um, so it's, it's really important to look for that component because, you know, you can foam roll or, you know, stretch and feel things move around, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's nervous system interference there. So you really want to have someone who can evaluate that for you to see, you know, is there, is there nervous system dysfunction here? And if so, how do we correct it? And a lot of times parents have fears that um, there have been, in the past, there were ABA providers who said, you need to be doing ABA and nothing else, mm -hmm. right? I think that ship should have sailed by now. And if anybody who's listening, your ABA provider is being that way with you, let's sit down and have a conversation about that because that ship should have sailed. Right. That um, there are ABA providers who work in, in conjunction with their families now as they're going through a biomedical intervention at mm -hmm. the same time who will work with other types of therapy. Your, your ABA provider should be welcoming the speech uh, and language pathologist and the OT Absolutely. on your staff. Um, everybody should, you know, we've seen that that collaborative model is what works for families and for individuals. And I just want to throw it out there that I, I think from reading your literature that you look forward to working with all those different things. And when a family is doing biomedical, they, they can be coming to you as well. Absolutely. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, I mean, when we're looking, when we're looking at kids, especially on the spectrum with the neurodevelopmental challenges, there's multiple body systems that are in dysfunction, right? You've got the nervous system is not communicating properly. Often the gut is leaky, mm -hmm. um, and that leaky gut can cause inflammation that can lead to brain inflammation, mm -hmm. right? Um, oftentimes their detoxification system is not working the way it needs to. Sometimes they need extra support. So really the parents need to be working on all of that concurrently, and it's so much work. Yeah, That's the thing. It's so much work. Um, my best friend actually recovered her son. He was diagnosed at 14 months, and by the time he was about four, he was completely recovered. Wow. But it was such a long haul. Yeah. And watching her go through it, you know, the biggest frustration for her was she'd find something that would work and would work for two weeks and then stop working. Mm. And so it was like always two steps forward, one step back, back right. to the drawing board. Um, but there's so many things that need to be worked on in these kids. It's exhausting for the parents, mm -hmm. but that whole body approach can really make huge yeah. changes. And then of course there's dietary changes and yeah. all, I mean, all of that. Well, and I really <laughs> hope that in this, uh, in the field of autism, that everyone now should be on the page of looking at 
all of our individuals on the spectrum as being whole people. Absolutely. Who have all kinds of things, and no one is alike. Everybody, It's individual snowflakes yep. uh, that need individual things, and that each one of those individuals is in a family that needs individual things too. Yeah. So, the, And that we get this model of taking care of the whole person while we embrace the whole family and have right. everything work. And I, I think that this fits in marvelously and splendidly. Splendid. Yeah. I'm glad you think Whatever. that because I agree. I, you know, I want ex, uh, splendiferously. I think it's the <laughs> word I was going for, right? Um, but no, this is amazing, and uh, I definitely want your car. Yay! <laughs> That's how I feel. Awesome. Um, but so I want to encourage parents if they want to know more about chiropractic in the field of autism, mm -hmm. is there a place that they could go to learn more? I would say start with that ICPA website. Okay. Because there is re the there is research there. There are links that will take you to different articles. They can start reading about it. Um, and then also, I'm not sure, I haven't done a PubMed search recently, but there might be some stuff on PubMed. Okay. Um, and then I will tell you, the, the, a lot of chiropractors are doing case studies and publishing a lot of those. If anyone wants something specific, they can certainly get a hold of me and I'll try to get it over to okay. them. Okay. And then we're almost out of time, but you and I had talked uh, before we came live on the air about the fact, I just was learning that there are different types of chiropractors right uh, that, that I hadn't put two and two together when when I was a teenager I went to one who as I said threw me around the table <laughs> and then my mother switched chiropractors and I and I make the little pretzel gesture because I felt like I right. was a pretzel but I felt whoa afterwards <laughs> and then she switched and sent me to another chiropractor who had this little metal gun that would you know shoot me in the hip and shoot me in the arm and whatever and I would get off the table and feel bruised and battered and didn't feel the whoa right so I don't think that all chiropractors are created equal, and there are. And I was just thinking that was just his style that he didn't like to throw people around the table. Right. But it's a, it's a different philosophy. Well, I guess. it's not. It's not necessarily a different philosophy, but there are a lot of different techniques. For okay. example, there are some chiropractors who only work on the top couple bones of the neck. Right. Okay. That would be an upper cervical chiropractor. Okay. Uh, my chiropractor actually happens to be an upper cervical chiropractor, even though I adjust the full spine, and it's okay. just because of my unique. Um, I had a major injury when I was 18, so just my unique health history. So the chiropractor that you go to just works on your top upper two bones spine. of the neck, right? Okay. But I've, I mean, I've I've had full spine full spine chiropractors most of my life. Okay. I think it's not so much. There are different philosophies, and it's a little bit too bad. Chiropractors have made it very confusing for the public. Um, if you look at the original philosophy back in 1895, it was let's adjust the spine to allow the nervous system to communicate properly to the body, keep that brain body connection going well. And unfortunately, so many chiropractors have turned into musculoskeletal specialists mm. that don't, don't focus on that brain-body connection so much anymore. Uh, maybe that's exactly what I see. And, and, and honestly, insurance is part of the reason that that happened. Okay. Because what happens is when you bill an insurance company, you have to give them a diagnosis code. And the diagnosis codes that chiropractors were given were sprain and strain of the spine or muscle spasm or... Right. Right? Those kinds of things. So There's nothing on the code that says, whoa! Right, exactly. And so really, that, that shift started at about the 70s and 80s. Um, but prior to that, you, know, you went to the chiropractor because other things weren't working for you. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Okay, well, uh, this has been so exciting having you on here. Thank you. I really I'm, appreciate I'm you coming so on. I'm so grateful for the person who referred you. Let's say all the websites again and say that uh, the name of your practice is Restoration Cairo. Restoration Chiropractic in Calabasas. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, but it's restorationchirosfv.com to go uh, and get more information. And the, the name of the other website that you gave us with all the information mm -hmm. for certification, if you're not in Southern California. Oh, yeah, this is nationwide. It's yeah. icpa4kids.org, and that's the number four. So ICPA, it's perfect on the screen. There we go. icpa4kids.org. Okay, and you can find a chiropractor on there. Yep. Call them. It, it, should they, when they call, should they say, are you familiar with working with autism or are there questions they should well, ask? Well, there's almost always a link to the person's website, to the okay. practice website. And so I think you should go there and then call the doctor. You know, I always offer a free consultation. I'm not the right doctor for everybody. Um, some people like me and some people don't. I know it's shocking, right? Uh, that is shocking to um, me. But I don't not, like them, whoever doesn't right? like you. But not everybody, <laughs> not everybody feels like we're a good fit. And so I think it's really important to call the office you want to go to 
set up a consultation with the doctor and just make sure it's a good fit. And I, you know, I would add to that too, before you go, have the conversation about what insurance do you take and mm -hmm. how do you do insurance and how do you do billing? Absolutely. Because that's the thing that the, mm -hmm. the doctor that we went to uh, that just drove me absolutely batty. Yeah. I don't, I understand that insurance is weird and different and, and been made weird and different and every year in January they change it. Right. And that is just crazy town. It I, is. I get that. I totally do. But if I'm coming to do a service, I need to know how much is going to be my responsibility. Absolutely. And I feel that that is a reasonable and rational question to ask, how much is this going to cost right. me? And to be told, we don't know, but we'll bill you. Of course we know. I mean, the reality well, is if you don't you know, wouldn't find out. Right. You wouldn't <laughs> go on vacation without figuring out how much it costs. And like, this is what I said yeah, to them. Yeah. Um, and they were like, they couldn't tell me. And then they huh. said it'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of this and that. And then when I got the bill, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of another neighborhood <laughs> that has gardeners and swimming pools. You thought it was going to be the 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 like the, the bad part of town neighborhood. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, literally, what they told me was it'll be somewhere between twelve dollars and fifty cents and twenty-seven dollars <throat> and fifty cents for my insurance mm -hmm. uh, copay for the thing. And then it was $125 per visit. Big difference. And they waited to bill me after 10 visits. That's a big difference. And when I said, I have a problem with you. <clears throat> right. Was, well, we're not going to talk to you until you pay the thing in full. Right. I will tell you the problem with children and billing insurance is, again, let's go back to those diagnosis codes. Right. You know, they want to see things like, headaches or back pain or some sort of a strain, most kids don't have that. Yeah. So it's very difficult to bill insurance when you're okay. dealing with kids. So, so ask up front. Ask up front. Most kids are on some sort of a cash plan. Most chiropractors do make it affordable. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is so fabulous to yeah. know. Uh, all right. Now just talk some more. So let's make sure we say the website one more time. Restoration Cairo, C-H-I-R-O-S-F-B. Um, and that is dot com. We are totally out of time. We're going to be back next Wednesday. I'm not sure, but I think we have Dr. Doreen Graham Pichet next Wednesday, plus a full Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. I thank all of you for the privilege of being with you. Uh, please know that you do not have to do this alone. We're done for now, uh, so I'm going to say bye-bye for now. Give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you, too. We'll see you next week.